And I just simply cannot understand or see any reason why an accredited institution of higher learning should be promoting conversations about reparative therapy. The harm of lifelong and lifelong scarring that can occur because of reparative therapy is horrific. And to me, this is a form of bullying. When institutions of authority and power over students impose their misguided and misunderstanding of scripture on the young and vulnerable among us, well, to me, that is a form of bullying, a power imbalance. And sadly, I have learned a lot about bullying in the past seven years. Because as my son Tyler Clemente was a target of cyberbullying, Tyler made a terrible decision, a permanent decision to a very temporary situation. On September 22, 2010, Tyler died by suicide. He was only 18 years old. And it was at this point that my husband and I needed to move forward and that we started the Tyler Clemente Foundation. Because to be perfectly clear, in my heart, I believe Tyler was targeted because of his sexual orientation. And I do believe that that is one of the main focuses that our foundation needs to address. Because in the last seven years, I have learned much about the stigma of shame and isolation and despair. Um, my son's as well as my own in the wake of his death and the social and the media frenzy about his death. Um, and it is just heart-wrenching for me to see that um, an institution of higher learning, a place that is teaching future psychologists to be trained, that are training future psychologists that we are going to be going to for help would happen, would, could possibly ever engage in conversations about reparative therapy. Reparative therapy has been known and shown to be dangerous, highly damaging, and dis it is totally discredited topics like reparative therapy could not possibly be brought onto colleges like Biola. I believe institutions of higher learning should maintain the standards set by appropriate medical and mental health professional organizations. In this case, um, at the American Psych Psychological Association, the APA, clearly determines that reparative therapy is not best practices. And I cannot understand why Christians would fear science. Science is merely the study of God's beautiful creation and perfect world. Um, and God continues to lavish on us wisdom and knowledge um, as we progress through the centuries. And we should use that wisdom that God um, provides for us because it is foolish to read and interpret scriptures with eyes from the first century. We must read with the eyes of the 21st century. Um, we know so much more today um, about the harmful physical, emotional, psychological, and spiritual effects that dogma and misguided teachings can cause. We have medical data and research that shows the tragic consequences on the lives that have been taken far too soon. God has allowed us to learn through research that we cannot change a person's sexual orientation. A person's sexual identity is a gift from God. And as the psalmist says, we are all perfectly and wonderfully created in God's image. All very different, yet all perfectly created in his image. And to try to change what God has created causes significant harms. And reparative therapy can cause depression, anxiety, drug use, homelessness, and even suicidal ideations. It should be, it has been rejected by every mainstream medical and mental health organization as dangerous and, fr and a fraudulent practice causing great harm. Reparative therapy simply is fraud. The purpose to of an act to trick, to cheat, to deceive others, and fraud is not of God. So for me as a Christian, it baffles me that Christians would even consider an approach that does not give life and show love. Because above all else, we are called to love. And love does not harm or cause pain. It does not destroy or tear down another individual, but rather it reaches out in compassion, giving life and hope to others. And reparative therapy does not do any of those things. But I do believe we need to go a little further upstream because research also shows that there is significant harm that societal pre prejudice and family rejection has on LGBTQ people and especially in particularly vulnerable youth. 
And in order to change those attitudes, we must put an end to the misguided teachings and traditions of bias, discrimination, and dogma that devalue the human spirit and cause so much pain and despair. We must stop teaching that someone is broken, worthless, or separated from God because of who God created them to love. Simply stated, we need to teach that being gay is not a sin. But I do think that teaching hate and discrimination is a sin. And that's what we need to move forward on. And it also disappoints me greatly when Christians need to hide behind the Religious Freedom Act. Yes. To hide behind this act um, for exemptions for Title IX for the federal non-discrimination laws I, is unthinkable for me. Um, because as a person of faith, uh, I cannot see how or why we would need an exemption, such as the exemptions that Biola University does take. Because for me, as a follower of Jesus Christ, I look to Jesus' words and his teachings and his stories and the parables. And it's so clear over and over again, he tells us to love our, the most important commandment of loving our God with all our heart and our soul and our strength and our mind, and to love our neighbor as ourself. And what better way to show love than to serve people? And who is our neighbor that we are supposed to love? Jesus clearly tells us that in the story of the parable of the Good Samaritan, as he shows the religious leader that asks him about who is the, the, our neighbor. It's the Samaritan that ends up being our neighbor. The one who shows mercy is our neighbor. And over and over again, God calls us to show mercy. Um, and we as Christians must remember that our neighbor is not someone that looks like us or talks like us or acts like us or even believes like us. But our neighbor is all of God's creation and we need to go forward knowing that. We need not to take exemptions, but we merely just need to show mercy. That's what the point is. So my hope today is that we not only raise awareness against the harms of reparative therapy, but for universities like Biola to step up and to stop stealing away the futures of our LGBTQ youth and stop destroying families like our family, the, the Clementi family, and stop killing the most vulnerable among us with their dogma and teachings, um, but rather to give life and the true gospel message of hope, peace, mercy, love, and life. And also for the world to see that there are other Christians out there who do act justly and who do love mercy and who do want to walk humbly with our Lord and Savior. And with that, I will turn it over to Mel White. Thank you.